Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Jaden Stitches Show. We're doing a wearable on the show today. More festival fashion. DIY. DIY. Anyway, I have had so many requests to make more wearable stuff, and I thought this was one we'd all get a kick out of making. It's Granny Squares fashioned into a vest. <laughs> You're going to need five granny squares. I'm going to show you how big to make them in today's tutorial. And you can make this all in one color like I have. Mm -hmm. Or you can make it by busting through your scrap heap and make it every single color under the rainbow and really capture that fabulous bohemian look. So grab your yarn, grab your hooks, get a big one, and let's head over to the craft table and make ourselves a festival vest, baby. <laughs> Using a cotton worsted weight yarn or a size 4 for the granny squares that I'm using today. I'm also using a larger hook than normal. This is a 6.5 millimeter hook so it's larger it makes for a larger stitch and I want a nice loose lacy granny square. You're also going to need a yarn needle to weave in your ends, some straight pins, a measuring tape, <laughs> and a button. You don't need too many, but just a fancy button. So pull out those buttons that you've got lying around in a tin or a bottle and pick a large one that you like that you're going to use as a focal point on your vest. You're going to build five granny squares for this vest project. One big one that'll go on your back and four small ones that'll sit on your front. The first one we're going to make is the big granny square. This is how you measure to figure out how big you need your cranny square to be. Take your measuring tape. <laughs> you want to measure from one shoulder to the other. So something like this. You don't want it to go too close to your collarbone, but you don't want to necessarily go all the way out to the edge. So when I measure myself, comfortably, I'm about 15 inches from one side to the other. That's a nice round number and it's important to get a nice round number here. You don't have to worry about it being an exact number because it's a vest. It doesn't have to be exact. So get this measurement and then we can move on. Go ahead and make a granny square that's approximately that measurement all the way across. So it's a square. It'll be the same measurement either side, any side you look at. If you're unsure, hold up your granny square to your front and just look at it as it goes across your shoulders. It can be a little bigger than necessary and that's okay. It's better to err on the side of too big rather than too small because you don't want the vest to be too snug. Now, this is an important thing. Your large granny square has to be an even number of rows. So if you get to the exact measurement, but you're at nine rows or 11 rows, add one extra row so that you have an even number of rows. Find the middle of your granny square, so the exact center where you started, and count out on a diagonal to the corner. You count like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is a 10 row granny square. It's an even number of rows and it fits me from one shoulder to the other. So my back square is done. Then you're gonna need four little squares for the front. How little? Well, that brings me back to why you need an even number of rows for your large back square. Your smaller squares are going to be exactly half the number of rows as your big square. So in my case, my big granny is 10 rows. So my little grannies are five rows each. And there's a reason for that. <laughs> this is so they all fit together neatly. Here's my big square. It's 10 rows. And here's how my little squares fit in nice and neatly. Each one is five rows, or exactly half the number of rows as my big square. And this is how they'll fit together. Here's my front. <laughs> and that's my back. Now all we have to do is start sewing. Thread up your needle and you're going to make your first stitch between the corner, the two corner stitches or the corner chains in the first two granny squares. 
So I like to just tie a really simple knot. I'm going to weave in this little short tail later. Then you can hold them together so that you've got your edge and just sew them together, one side and then the other. If you need help sewing together your granny squares, you can check out my how to join your granny squares tutorial and I'll put that link in the description box down below. Once you've sewn your two front panels together in the middle, lay them both down on top of your large granny square and now we're going to address the shoulders. You're going to sew both sides from the outside corner in, just like you did in the middle, only two shells length. So you're going to leave here to the center or your neck piece open and you're going to do the same thing from this corner, sew in two shells so you're only sewing together your panels at the shoulder just a little ways. Okay, so now you want to try it on and this is where we're going to check for armhole size. So put it on so that you've got the front draped over your top and the back hanging down here and then grab the bottom back corner and the bottom front corner, hold them together and then Feel your way around, use your straight pins if you want to. I'm probably only going to sew up three, maybe four shell lengths from the bottom corner because I don't mind if I've got a larger armhole. So there's three, three, three and a half shell lengths. That's a nice big armhole for me and it's a vest so it doesn't really matter. But you want to be comfortable. This is a summer breezy vest and you're going to wear it over your t-shirts and your tank tops, maybe even over your bikini. So make sure that it's comfortable for you. You can make that armhole as large or as small as you want, but measure first before you sew it up. That way you don't have to take anything out and you can move along with the pattern. <laughs> okay, I'm going to sew up the bottom side of both halves of my vest. So I'm going to start at the bottom corner and I'm going to sew up the length of four shells. So that'll leave my knot here and that will give me a, this area as my armhole. So I've threaded up my needle. I'm going to go ahead and sew up the two sides. Okay, so now you've got the whole vest assembled. This is the part where you get to try it on and customize it. So if you've got uh, a little more up top than the average person, you might want to do what I'm about to do, and that's add a little edging to each of the inside flaps of your vest before you pull back your lapels and tack them. Um, this is if you want to be able to close it or make it sort of come to just a little bit more under the bosom area. If it fits you nicely the way it is, then you can move on to the next step, which is putting on the button. But if you're going to add a little extra up and down both insides, this is how you're going to do it. You want to take your vest, lay it down so that the front part or the outside part is facing up, and this is the inside edge. This is the inside edge sort of that I'm, that I'm looking at here. And you can tell because there's my two squares sewn in the middle. We're going to add a straight line of granny striping right up this inside edge. So you're going to start with a slip knot. You're going to join your yarn to the bottom corner in that nice little chain two space. Chain three to begin and complete the shell which is two more double crochets Okay, so there's your first shell, and then it's just like a regular granny side. So I like to chain one for a spacer, identify my next space, and work three double crochets, or a shell, into that space. Chain one for a spacer, and continue. I'm going to work this shell pattern all the way up the inside edge of my granny serve, my granny squares, <laughs> and I'm going to end with a single shell when I get to the top.
I've worked the shell pattern all the way up the inside edge of my granny square vest. I've put a shell in either space on either side of that center seam and I worked my last shell up here in this top corner. If you need to make it longer or you want more width or you want to work an extra line of the granny square, uh, sorry, I should say the granny shell pattern, this is what you do. Get to the edge, chain three, flip your work over, And you're skipping over this shell. So just leave your chain three and pretend it doesn't exist and then work into the next space. So begin your shell pattern in that next space. And oops, <laughs> Com complete that same pattern all the way down working the same thing. So shell, chain one, shell, chain one into all of your spaces. When you get to the last space, work your shell. So it'll be a shell worked into this nice big space here. That's my tail, ignore that. And then double crochet once into that top of that last stitch. And that'll be the way you end your row. But if you're not putting on an extra row, and I'm not, I'm just gonna do one row on either side. I'll show you what that looks like. So I finished all the edging that I want to give my little um, vest here and all I'm going to do is just fasten off. So I'm going to snip my yarn fasten off and weave in that tail. Then I'm going to do this exact same pattern on the other side so the other inside which is this side turn it around there's the other inside edge of the front of my granny square vest. So now I'm gonna repeat that same pattern all along here. All right, I just finished my shell pattern down the other inside edge of my uh, vest. And now before I fasten off, I'm gonna work a row of single crochet all the way around the entire outside of my vest. So all the way across the bottom, I'm gonna to get to the other corner, I'm gonna work right up the other side of this single crochet here. I'm gonna work two single crochets in the corner, turn, and work all the way around the entire outside edge. And just so you can see how it looks when you work up the side of a stitch. So the last thing you've made is a single, or I should say a double crochet. I'm gonna chain one, and then I'm gonna work back on top of that double crochet. So I'm just gonna create two stitches so I'm working single crochet now down the side of that double crochet stitch. Okay, and then the rest is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna put a single crochet in each space and I'm gonna work a single crochet into the top of each stitch or double crochet. So you should have a single crochet in the top of each double crochet. When you get to a space, just single crochet right into the space and continue all the way around. Work two single crochets in each corner. That gives you a nice little turn and uh, work it all the way around the entire outside of your vest. It'll give it extra strength. It'll unify all of those little edges where you've sort of stitched together your squares and it'll make it look nice and neat. Okay, quick recap. I added an extra row of granny shells up both inside edges of my granny square vest. So both of my front panels got an extra row of shell stitching up the inside edge. Before I fastened off my yarn after the second row, I worked a row of single crochet all the way around the outside edge. So the bottom and then the other side up the inside and all the way around the neck. So it's one great big non unending sort of rectangle. Now comes the fun part. So I've got it on, I'm gonna decide where I wanna put my, my little button because I just wanna be able to kind of clasp it. It doesn't have to close over. If it does, fine, put your button recessed a little bit, but this is how we're gonna do the actual closure. So you're gonna put your vest on 
and you're going to stand in the mirror and you're going to look at yourself and you're going to go, well, do I want it here or do I want it to kind of be loose or do I want it to overlap? You're going to pick a button. So I've got a whole bunch here that I like. I was kind of deciding. I didn't know whether I wanted to go gold or if I wanted to go sort of retro. This is a, a leather button off of an old jacket from the 70s. Uh, but I settled on a nice long wooden two-hold bead. I love these. And it's, I think these are, I think these might be called toggles or part of a toggle closure, but that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use this nice wooden bead right about here. So I'm just going to go ahead and sew it on. Since my holes are really big, I can use my yarn needle and more of my cotton yarn. But if you're putting on a regular button, just grab a needle and thread, sew it on somewhat loosely, right about where you want it. Um, you know, if you feel like you've got to pin it or if you can hold it and maybe with your fingers and you know where you're going to put it, just take your time, decide where you want your button and sew it on. <laughs> Once you've got your button on, it's time to make the closure. So you want to grab your hook, grab your yarn, make a slip knot, and you're going to make sure you lay your vest down nice and flat so that both edges are even. You're going to pick a chain, uh, either on the very edge or maybe even around a piece of a shell. So this is up to you. I think I'm gonna have my toggle come out from the inside of a shell. So I've slipped my hook underneath this, but if you wanna do it off the edge, you can. Just join your yarn with a slip stitch and then chain, start chaining. So I like to do things in sets of 10. I'm gonna chain 10 to start. All right, I've chained 10 and I'm just gonna sort of see how this looks if I put it around my button. So I think I'm gonna need a few more. I'm gonna add five more. That'll be enough. Yeah, that makes a nice little toggle. I remember that I have it, I like to wear it a little loose, so I don't want it to be too tight. Then I just slip my hook back into the same place that I started it from and slip stitch. There we go. Fasten off, weave in all your ends and that's your toggle made. Okay, so now you've got your closure on and you can make it tighter if you decide it's too loose. And if your vest does to stretch a little bit in the near future, don't worry about it. You can always take out some of these pieces like your chain link and make it a little bit smaller if you need to. You can even move your button if you want. But having said that, let's move on. You've got your two lapels. So these are gonna like flap a little bit if you don't tack them down. I recommend deciding whereabouts you like them. And then with a little needle and thread or even more yarn and your, your yarn needle, just tack down the corners. And if you really wanna get fancy, you can make yourself a couple of really cute little appliques. I've made some trillium shaped flowers here. And you can sew them down on top of your lapel corners and just give yourself a little more razzle dazzle on your vest. <laughs> or you can leave it plain, it's entirely up to you. Now, let's move on to the fringe. I've cut six 30 centimeter or 12 inch lengths. So each one of my tassels is gonna have six of these lengths in it. I'm gonna pick it up in the middle and each one of my spaces across the bottom of my granny square is gonna get one of these tassels. So I'm gonna start in the bottom corner space, I'm gonna poke the middle, so I've folded my tassel bits in half. I'm gonna poke the whole thing up through the middle. I wanna try and make sure I get all of it. So give it a tug to make sure you've got all of it. There we go. And then, sort of even it out, make sure that all of your pieces are nice and even. Okay, grab both ends pull them up through the middle, and then neatly tug on all of your strands until they're all about the same length. Now you can do this and then sort of trim them all to make sure that they all look the same way, like they're all roughly the same thing, but if you want a slightly more kind of rustic or rough looking uh, approach <laughs> to your vest, you can leave them untrimmed, but that's entirely up to you. 
I like to sort of grab every single one of them, just give it all a nice little sort of tug, and you can see my knot is getting tighter at the top there. And that way I know that it's not going to come undone. There. And I'm going to repeat that for every single space all the way across the bottom, front and back, of my vest. <laughs> Once you've got your tassels on, you're all finished. All you have to do now is cover it in your own flare. <laughs> I've added a couple of little crocheted flowers that I've made, and I've got lots of crochet flower tutorials and a leaf tutorial too. We'll put the links for some of those in the description box down below as well. And that's it! We built five granny squares, sewed them all together, added a very simple border, some tassels, a button, a little button closure, and we pinned back our lapels. And now you are ready to go to the music outside, in the park, or the beach, or somebody's barbecue, or wherever you want to go in your fabulous new vest. And don't forget, this would look amazing in a multicolored set of grannies too. So bust through your scraps if you want to wear something and look really bohemian. <laughs> and that is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in and making a vest with me today. If you've got vests to show me, I would love to see them. You can pin pictures to me on Pinterest. You can send them to me on Instagram, just tag me at Jaden Stitches, and you can send them to me on Google Plus as well. I'm also at Jaden Stitches there, and I would love to see your pictures. So, until next week, everybody, stay safe, stay crafty, and we'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye!